are so pleasured to have you with us today. It is gonna be a great service. Tom is gonna deliver a message that you do not wanna miss. For that though, we got some great worship and I'm gonna tell you right now that worship is one thing that'll get you closer to the Lord before you get a message delivered to you that might change your heart. So stick with us, it is gonna be great. You don't wanna miss it. See you soon. If you're lonely, longing for someone to hear you If your burdens feel like more than you can bear If you're searching for a place to just be honest Come just as you are if you're tired of just hoping for an answer If you're wishing you could let your God come down If you feel like you can hold it all together Come just as you are There's no need any hiding at the Father's house you met with open arms and He gives grace without condition as you are with nothing else just come There is space for everyone who feels unworthy A place for those who never felt at home Where you don't have to wonder if you're wanted Come just as you are There's a hope
trusted him at all They saved it here to wrestle with your questions Come just as you are
I just want to speak the name of Jesus Over every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus Cause your name is power Your name is healing Your name Every stronghold shine through the shadows, burn like the fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by.
speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within his presence. I speak Jesus.
Almighty Fortress. In Almighty Fortress, you go before us. Nothing can stand against the power of our God. You shine in the shadows. You win every battle. Nothing can stand against the power of Good morning, everyone, and good afternoon to some of all my uh, North Carolina family and friends. Uh, Tom Gervis here, all the way from the great state of Washington today. I'm in Washington State. Uh, uh, it's going to be a blessing to see all of you. I hope I get a chance to see uh, all of you, or most of you anyway. Uh, I get to bring God's Word today, and I am very blessed to be able to do that. Uh, I still want to continue to pray, everybody. A shout out for our pastors. Uh, but they need our prayer. Uh, it's been a very, very hard 
uh, last week or so, and uh, they need our love and support. And Pastor Mark and Carmen, just know how much we care about you and we're thinking of you literally every single day. Uh, so, and for all of our brothers and sisters who are out there that are that are afflicted with something, you know, we're still praying. We are a praying church. Uh, Mondays and Wednesday nights, we pray. And so we'll be right back at it doing battle with the enemy. So uh, you guys keep hanging in there and just know, uh, Pastor Mark and Carmen, how much uh, you guys mean to us, how much we love Daniel. And uh, we're just going to keep uh, fighting this good fight as uh, as we have been and as we will continue. Um, okay, so, but, you know, nevertheless, we have to, we have to move forward. We have to keep going on. And today, you know, um, I remember getting a, me a message uh, on really, it started off as pride and then the word humility kind of jumped in. So it was kind of this uh, mix of the two words there. And uh, so I said, okay, Lord, <laughs> I'm getting the idea that you want to you want to talk about this. So pride and humility is uh, is kind of where this is going to go. Um, the word pride, pride. As I examined that word, right, I was surprised to find out how many times words like gratification, self gratification, fulfillment, pleasure, self image, self worth, and ego, you know, were used in association with the word pride. I mean, pride clearly brings self-gratification. It brings joy, um, pleasure, delight. It's a word, you know, associated with one's own accomplishments, one's own victories. Um, and sometimes that's appropriate. I mean, I think there's a, uh, but um, biblically, the word pride has not done well in the Bible. And we're going to check that out. It's listed as one of the seven things that God hates from the book of Proverbs. A proud look uh, is, one translation says, haughty eyes. However, anyone looks at the word pride, God is not necessarily impressed. God does not approve of those, you know, seeking self-gratification -gratif through prideful acts. That's not, especially with the definition of pride today. You know, we, we live in a world that pride is looked at very, very differently. Proverbs 8, 13 says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. To fear the Lord, to fear the Lord being, you know, a humble act. That is, to fear the Lord is humility. But it, the scripture goes on and says, I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. That's God speaking. I hate pride, arrogance, evil behavior and perverse speech. God is using plain speech here, gang. When you fear the Lord, that's humility. That's that humble spirit that God wants us to operate in every day. But then he goes on to say, I hate pride. You know, in the, in the, there's another book, um, in the book of Daniel, um, you know, where the Israelites are overrun and by uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and uh, Babylon. <clears throat> but Nebuchadnezzar is eventually completely humbled and if you look at the book of Daniel, uh, chapter 4 and verse 37, here's what Nebuchadnezzar en ends up saying. This great king of maybe the biggest army in, and, uh, in the world at the time. <clears throat> it says, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and exalt and glorify the king of heaven, because everything he does is right and all his ways are just. And those who walk in pride... He is able to humble. Wow, that is a big deal for somebody in his stature to say. And so what the circumstances were for him to get to that point, read the book of Daniel. Very interesting. The Bible makes it clear, though, that those who walk in pride, you know, around in pride, are not doing themselves any favors in God's eyes. It's not a characteristic that we want to be wearing this is also not to say that we can't take a level of pride in, in accomplishments and things. Of course we can. But there's a spirit of pride, a spirit of never being wrong, haughty eyes. This is where there is an error. You know, looking back at the, at the month of, of June as Pride Month, you know, you can clearly see that God takes no pride in these 
parades or advertisements, constant bickering and clamoring to get attention from everybody. The month, as far as God is concerned, is detestable, sadly. Yet we have to, as Christians, we have to endure this. And we have to find a way to humble ourselves through the constant barrage of, of people calling, you know, us every kind of slur imaginable just because we choose to believe God's word. That's the crime that we commit. We choose to believe God's word. They don't want you to go to believe God's word. They don't want you to believe that uh, what they do is wrong. You know, what we, what we don't need is a pride month. What we need is a humility month. That's what we need. We need a repentance month. Second Chronicles uh, 714, very, very famous scripture that probably all of you know. It says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them. I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. <clears throat> oh, Lord, we need healing and hope. For America. Our hope is in God. It is not in our sin. It is not in our pride. You know, there was a time when people were ashamed of their sin. This sin or any other sin, honestly, but now it, it seems that people are no longer ashamed. We're celebrating. We're celebrating and endorsing our sin. At least when you are ashamed of your sin, you can repent. You have a chance to repent. You can seek forgiveness and confess it and, and receive grace and forgiveness and healing in your life and in your lifestyle. But now we're not ashamed. We're proud of our sin. There was a, a, a pastor, I used to listen to him all the time. His name was Adrian Rogers. He's passed away. Um, he used to say, uh, and I, I love this, what used to sleep down the back alleys, uh, now struts down Main Street. Um, it just means that we no longer hide our shame. We no longer hide our sin. It's just right out in the open for everybody to see. If you will humble yourselves before the Lord and come to him in repentance and faith, there is no sin that he won't forgive because the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all and all our sins, every sin. So it's, it's clear biblically, and it's overwhelmingly clear biblically, that we're to be humble. We're to, we're to walk in that characteristic, in that spirit of humility. And I'd like to just offer four examples of biblical humility that are probably obvious, um, but maybe it'll help shape us towards that spirit that God wants us to walk in. First of all, there's Jesus. <laughs> okay, Jesus, there's no greater person in the history of the planet who is more humble than Jesus. Uh, look, go, go into the book of Philippians. Philippians 2, and I'm going to read 6 through 11. Check this out, gang. Who, he's talking about Jesus here, Paul, being in very nature God, he was God in every way did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in, the, in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even to death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, and that at that name, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to, uh, to glory of the God the Father. He, he wrote these words, who being in the very nature of God on the earth didn't consider equality with God, something to be grasped. He wasn't going to use, you know, he had the full abilities of God. He was God walking on the earth. And he didn't rain down lightning bolts, you know, on his enemies. 
He didn't put himself up in the greatest palace. He went from town to town healing, healing the sick, preaching the message of good news. And he did it while living out of a tent, mostly. This was our God. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't look to his own interests because he prayed three times in the garden to have the cup removed from him. And Paul reminds us, though, in the book of Philippians, we are to have that mindset that Jesus ultimately has. In the NIV verse 5, it says, Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. That's the attitude. That's how we're supposed to walk. Jesus gave up the glory he had in heaven. He gave up his place on the throne where God rules the universe. He gave up his power to defend himself, but willingly gave his life as a ransom for many. He loved us so much he died for us. He endured shame, ridicule, scorn, torture, humility, and, and an agonizing death on the cross. That's the ultimate in being humble. And we're supposed to be like that. Paul says, you know, we sh that's the attitude. He says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. You know who else was in a, 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 a humble man? It was Moses. Um, if you go to the book of Numbers, here's what the scripture says. Numbers 12 and verse 3. It says, now Moses, I think Moses wrote this book though, so I don't know if this, does this count? <laughs> now Moses was a very humble man, more humble than anyone else on the face of the earth. That's the scripture. Now that would be saying a lot. Imagine being the meekest man on the face of the planet. And, and I don't believe you can be prideful while being meek. But meekness and humility are from the same mind, right? So we had better not associate meekness with weakness, because that's not going to work. Because Moses was anything but weak. He was a shepherd, okay? He knew how to tend the sheep. He knew how to tend. He worked in very hard. He worked in some of the harshest lands that there were tending sheep, walking all, off, and doing all kinds of things uh, with, with his hands. And he, he's associated with being a shepherd. Moses was not weak. That's, and I, I want to give you kind of an, an idea here. You know Andre the Giant, right? Does everybody know Andre the Giant, the massive guy? that uh, He was huge, this guy. <laughs> he was a very large dude. He was a professional wrestler. And, uh, but when he would give interviews or he was like on the set of a movie, um, I guess... You know, I, I read that he was as quiet as a church mouse. He was this, this massive individual, was quiet, you know, and, and just didn't speak, man, a few words. Everybody knew him as, you know, and said he was a very humble and meek man. But no one could make the mistake of saying he was weak. And this is what I'm talking about with Moses, you know, you, you would never make the mistake of saying Andre the Giant was weak. Never. Just because he was quiet and that wasn't the case. Same thing with Moses. The idea is that. In the book of Exodus, God is ready, by the way, uh, to wipe out this disobedient Israelites, right? But it's Moses that stands in the gap for the people. And here's what God had said, just so you, you, you're enlightened by this. Exodus 32, 9 and 10 said, I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Stiff-necked, by the way, is prideful, doing their own things. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them, that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. I would have probably, if God had said that to me, I would have probably said, this is a great idea, God. Do whatever you need to be doing. Because obviously you're not happy. I agree with everything that you're saying, God. But Moses shows us his heart. And he begins to intercede on behalf of Israel. We need to do this whenever we... This is the attitude. We need to live in this kind of an attitude. Moses reminds God that he promised Abraham, that he would, he would 
make of him a great nation. So thanks to Moses, Israel wasn't consumed. <laughs> and the Lord did not bring disaster on the people of God. Moses was humble, but definitely not weak. He showed great strength when speaking to God. Another example of biblical humility was a man uh, by the name of Epaphroditus. He was extremely valuable to Paul, uh, the apostle uh, at the church of Philippi. Epaphroditus is found, by the way, if you want to check this out, I'm not going to read the set of scriptures, but it's in Philippians 2, and if you look at 23 through 30, you're going to, you can read about Epaphroditus. When Paul was, was writing to the church at Philippi, he, he reminded them about Timothy, and, but he wasn't going to send, he, he, he wasn't going to be able to send um, Timothy at the time. Uh, so he sent Epaphroditus, his brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier is how he describes him. And in verse 26 and 27, this is really where Epaphroditus uh, shows, you know, the humility shows up. Paul writes that the church should receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such men. Because he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to help him. Epaphroditus nearly died for the sake of the gospel. Maybe it was from exhaustion or, or exposure to the elements, from helping Paul maybe deliver his letters to the church. Or maybe Epaphroditus was in prison, I don't know, with Paul for a time. But regardless of what it was, he poured his life into helping Paul and the church, so much so that he nearly died from it. That's what the scripture says. He's immortalized in the scriptures. He literally risked his life in order to be Paul, a servant to Paul, his like right-hand man. And you don't do that unless you have a humble spirit. You're giving up yourself. They wouldn't, they wouldn't dare go this far and give this much unless you're humble. He esteemed Paul's life and his missionary work above his own life. If it was a, if it, it, it was as if he was expendable almost for the gospel's sake, I guess. To me, that, that seems like a profound sign of humility, a signal that this man, he, he cared about others and the work of Paul and the missionary work he was doing above all. That's humility. And finally, there's Paul. <laughs> we got to talk about him. You know, I've given you some examples of biblical humility, but let's not, Paul lost so much as well. He was among the brightest of the Jewish uh, religious groups, I guess, um, a Pharisee uh, regarding, you know, the law, an expert in the law, being a Hebrew of Hebrews, kind of, and being, you know, from the stock or the tribe of Benjamin. And then he finds himself <laughs> on the Damascus Road. And that experience changes his life. Paul was a bad dude till then. He would lose all that he knew. He would become maybe the second, only to Jesus really, uh, the most persecuted person on the planet. He says in, in uh, Philippians 3, if you jump over to Philippians 3, 8, 8 and 9, he says this, Yet indeed, I, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish. He counts it as trash, his old life, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the, you know, the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Paul's humility is on display where he considers himself the least of the apostles and the chief of all sinners. No one says that publicly, <laughs> at least in his ministry, unless they're humble, unless they're wearing that humble spirit. God humbled this man. He had to. And from that Damascus Road moment, he lived a life of humility. And I believe 
you know, there are clear reasons why, you know, the word pride is looked down upon in the Bible and being humble is closer to God. Each of, you know, each of these characteristics we can choose in our life. We can choose to be prideful and arrogant. We oftentimes don't even know we're doing it. <laughs> or we can choose to be humble, humility. You know, if we think back on the night of the Passover meal, Jesus washed his disciples' feet, even the feet of the one who would betray him. That act of humility might be the single greatest act of humility ever done in history, right there. That was God himself. Okay, that was God himself taking the form of a servant and washing the dirty, disgusting feet of his disciples, even the feet of Judas Iscariot. This is an example of serving in humility. We really have no excuse, guys. Christ set the bar for humility. Think of God's grace like water. It's, you know, it always flows downhill and seeks that low level, that lowest level. It never reaches the high and lofty places, but only to those who are low and meek and humble. That's, it's constant through the scriptures. And I believe if you walk in pride and flaunt your pride, it's sin. That, that is for your own self-gratification. God wants us to think of others first. God wants us to put our, you know, the needs of others before ours. These are really, there are really two ways of, of living life. Choose to be humble. Choose to live a life of humility. Some of the greatest men and women in the Bible are the most humble human beings to have ever walked the face of the earth. And I can tell you now, I, I, have, the, I have the experience when, you're, when you love people and when you're just nice to people and you, and you, and you, you choose to, that humble spirit, Man, I'm telling you now, I get, I get extra fries at Red Robin because of this. These are, there are perks in being humble, in not being lofty, and being fun, and being open. But never putting yourself above anybody. We gave our heart to the Lord. We humbled ourselves before him. We made a public declaration that we were no longer going to live our lives for just ourselves, but in service to our king. Paul gave up so much when he turned his life over to Christ. And it will be the same for us. You will become a new creature in Christ. And you're going to want to help people. And you're going to, you're going to want to give money to the church and causes that help others. And you're not going to do this begrudgingly or, or with a heart of disdain. You'll do it because God did it first. Walk in this kind of love, church. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, chapter 23, verse uh, 11 and 12, I think it is, the greatest among you will be your servant. The person who serves you is greatest. Verse 12, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled. And whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus just makes it easy, doesn't he? Jesus makes it so clear that pride and, a, and idolatry, which is what that is, will one, one day be humbled and the meek will inherit the earth. God lays this out clearly. Walk out this life with a humble heart and a humble spirit. Your tremendous works are of no consequence to God. Let me read out of Jeremiah. I, I'm getting close. We're almost done here, everybody. Jeremiah 17, 5 through 9 says this. This is what the Lord says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who depends on flesh for his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. He will be like a bush in the wastelands. He will not see prosperity when it comes. He will dwell in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed 
is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. He will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never, never fails to bear fruit. And then verse 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? We, can't, we have to be careful what our heart says. Look to the word of God. Know what God says. Don't trust the world. Okay. Cursed is the man that does that. Don't look for approval from the world, no matter what they say. Put your confidence and trust in God only, and you'll be like a beautiful tree planted by a water whose leaves are always green. Get to know God. Get, get to know God through his word. People do this all the time with God. They, they, um, they, they don't know him through his word, and then they manipulatively, that's a mouthful, uh, project on God who they want him to be. It's ridiculous. They don't take the time to read the Bible and discover who God is and what he says about himself, his, his critiques, his standards. Uh, instead, they just project on God who they think he should be, and they're never really getting to know who God actually is is. Without the Bible, we create our own God, and we project on him who we think he should be, who we think he should be, who we think we should be. With the Bible, we're in relationship with God. But without the Bible, we're just idolaters, creating <clears throat> you know, our, our <laughs> creating our own God, I guess. God is a person, not an impersonal cosmic force, and he, he wants to be known. So he explains who he is through the Bible, and he talks about who he is and, and what he thinks. And the Bible is how we know God. We can, we can know him through prayer. We can know him through experience. But the Bible is what gives definition and boundary to all of it. Know God through his word. Humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up, church. He will lift you up. Don't create a, a caricature of God. You, the God you hope exists. That's making an idol. God's word tells us who God is. So walk in an attitude, you know, of humility. Put down pride and arrogance. This world lives in this, in this, um, this kind of prideful arrogance, I guess, this attitude. We should have nothing to do with that. We're going to love. We're going to love people even though they're not going to like the way that we love. We're going to love the way God has told us to love. So I, I just thought that was a, an important message today. The difference between the characteristics of pride and arrogance and, and because we're bombarded with the church, we're told how to think over and over again in commercials and um, the world is trying to make lifestyles and, and uh, patterns of life uh, normal. You know, uh, the sexualization of children even. They're trying so desperately to make these things normal. This is not. That is a horrible, horrible way to live. And we're, we're having nothing to do that, with that. We're going to walk in humility, but make no mistake. That being humble does not mean weakness. Okay, and uh, I just thought this, this was an important message to talk about today. I hope you guys are blessed. This is uh, Tom Gers. I'm in the state of Washington today, so I hope I get a chance to see all of you. There's going to be a baptism too, so, uh, you know, Duncan, be ready. Anyways, we, we, I, Kim and I love all of you. Um, 
We're so grateful for all of you, and we love the church. And Pastor Mark and Carmen, we're always thinking about you. God bless you all, and we will talk very, very soon. Wow, what a powerful service. So hey guys, check this out. Today at one o'clock, we want to invite you to the Emmons Marina because we're having a baptism. So come on, pack your gear, pack your beach gear, and let's meet at the beach and let's celebrate on this baptism Sunday. So hey guys, check it out. If you want to help support a New Day Church, please take this time for our tithes and offerings. There's many ways you can do it. There's our Giveify app, or you can download the app, and all the information is right here on the screen. Or you can also uh, go to our website, to anewdaychurch.com, and our mailing address is right there on the screen as well for our tithes and offerings. And we thank you so much for uh, investing in the kingdom, investing in a New Day Church, and seeing just how God is moving in greater ways. So hey, before I go, there's a couple more announcements that I want to bring to your attention before we sign off. It's all on the screen right here. First of all, Mondays and Wednesdays throughout the week, we got prayer. It is so powerful. Pastor Tom and Kimmy, man, they're rocking it in North Carolina. And they're always praying at, well, you see the times here on the screen. You see the schedule for Mondays. And of course, Wednesdays, of course, we are here. We got different people praying or just working the board. So if you haven't been part of that, come on, jump in, join us, and be part of it. And we're always, we're always praying for people. We're giving out praise reports. We're talking about how God is so good all the time, right? Come on, it's so powerful. Um, Sunday mornings, um, as you see, we just had Pastor Tom bring that powerful message. But you don't want to miss this coming Sunday, Mich Pastor Michelle, she's going to bring an incredible word. That's 10 a.m. on YouTube, so please check that out. Download it, or you can even check it out on Facebook as well. Our next in-person service, please mark this down on your calendar because we want to invite you to come out to us and be part of our service. Sunday, September 17th at 1 p.m. We are going to be at Wilcox Park in Linwood. We're going to have good food. We're going to have a powerful message. We're going to have a good time fellowshipping and worshiping. It's going to be such an incredible time. Lastly, but mostly, um, as you all know, um, the passing of Daniel Yaden, we are having that memorial service coming up on September 9th at 1 p.m. All of our information for that memorial service is right here on the board. And if you, if you have any questions, please reach out to one of our pastors, Pastor Ted or Michelle. Their phone numbers are right here on uh, directions or how you can help out or anything like that. And as we continue to support and lift our prayers to Pastor Mark and Carmen Yaden. So hey, uh, you know where we are. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We are just rocking it, so if you haven't been part of us yet, come join us every Sunday, Monday, throughout the whole week. We are always doing something incredible. So hey, thank you for being part of us. Thank you for worshiping with us, and we got many more stuff to come throughout uh, this upcoming years. So once again, thank you. I love you all, and God bless.